All right, everybody, welcome back to episode two of the Carbon Cardboard Podcast. I'm your host, Brian, joined with my good friend, Scott, a.k.a. the F1 Castle. Scott, wow, it's been a week since 2023 Tops Chrome. Formula One has been released. You got some early access with your Fanatics Live experience. We were just talking right before we hit the record button. You, my friend, have opened a lot of cases. Yeah, it's uh, it's been a whirlwind. Been a whirlwind. Uh, you know, at this point, you know, we're gonna go through some stats later from kind of the early access, just that one day, which was probably the the longest I've ever streamed, most grueling day I've had personally. Um, but yeah, at this point, we're upwards to almost almost fifty cases. Uh, just by myself so it is it has been a lot over the past week um i actually just got done kind of everything from all of the fanatics breaks from the the days that i was live on fanatics all of those are shipped out so if you were in a fanatics break i know a lot of people have actually messaged me saying they got their stuff today so so you either have your stuff or you're gonna have it within the next couple of days so uh but yeah it was uh it's it's been quite a week i mean last year's release was was large uh but this week or this year's was uh insane so yeah a lot and of i mean a lot of fun you 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 streamed for 18 19 hours the queen of the castle helped out <laughs> tell me about this trip to florida you you you, you jet yep. set it down to florida it's true yeah so i mean we did early access right with fanatics live on i think it was what the thursday the 15th of february on the thursday so started streaming at 9 a.m like you said we streamed for 19 hours 18 cases um and i was streaming until like 4 4 a.m uh and then i got done and grabbed my bags and 10 minutes later i was driving to the airport to uh fly down to florida and i actually i flew down to florida the reason i was going there was to hang out with my good friends, A.A. Mint, uh, Aaron, great friend of mine there from A.A. Mint, uh, to go down and do their kind of release night, you know, because Friday was this actual release of the product on on 216. So to do their release night event, uh, we got to rip in front of an RB19, which was last year's championship winning car for Red Bull. So that was a really cool experience. They have a great store down there ran by a great group of people um and some some pretty epic cards were pulled in the store too so i was uh it was really cool to see yeah maybe just the oscar piastri uh super fractor <laughs> auto too bad that <laughs> yeah. wasn't in the case that you got <laughs> i know right well it's funny because that night actually because <clears throat> that card was pulled a couple days later because that night they had a promo they were they were offering where if anyone hit the max or the oscar super fractor auto they were going to buy it for 25 grand so now I think maybe Oscar might be worth a little more than that. But um, that night, someone was ripping boxes there and opened an Alexander Albon Super Fractor F1 armor card, which is absolutely epic. My favorite insert. We'll get into those a little bit later. But my favorite insert in the product. They also hit an orange Lewis Hamilton auto, which they then like traded in for two cases and so in one of those two cases that they traded the orange Hamilton auto for, they brought those cases home with them and they're ripping at their house. Oscar Piastri, super factor auto. So, uh, and it was that same guy hit everything. Uh, I mean, T Coons, he was on an unbelievable run. Um, and, and you, you can speak from, from personal experience of being on an unbelievable run. I don't know if it's quite that good, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, so, I mean, it was really cool. It was awesome just to be there. I mean, guys, if you haven't already, if you're down in Florida, Cooper City, AA Mint, they have an amazing store, like state of the art, honestly, like patent pending stuff that they've got down there with QR codes, with their like slabs all up on the wall. They have a vending machine, like the ones you see in Japan a lot, you know, that have mm -hmm. different packs. You could buy a pack of of 2023 Formula One cards and and a bunch of other stuff. And they have a ton of wax, breaking rooms, like it was it was absolutely insane so really cool event great store and they don't just do f1 they've got everything i'm still shocked at like how does one stay awake for 19 hours plus and keep opening cards and, and keep up the 
keep up that enthusiasm man i <laughs> i've seen you in person ripping some of these cards and it is uh it takes a special talent so kudos to you my friend for yeah they're they're gonna have to start calling it a sport but no no but 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 i mean it is it's a lot you know i'll say i started the day with a little bit of this little coffee um which got me through you know i had gotten a decent amount of sleep the the couple days prior i was i was getting prepped for it i didn't get a ton of sleep the night before it's kind of like the night before you know christmas or something you know hard to sleep uh when you're a kid getting ready to open your presents so but we had uh you know gotten ready i was up at like 7 30 we got sebastian ready and then my wife, Queen of the Castle, took him to daycare, and I was kind of getting every all the last, you know, things ready to go, all my cases ready to go, um, and yeah, I mean, coffee probably got me through until like noon, and then uh, then we started going in with the the Red Bulls, yellow edition, tropical. It's the best Red Bull ever. Uh, but yeah, and the Queen of the Castle was bringing the amazing vibes. I mean, she wasn't there the entire night, but pretty pretty close. She made it until like 1230 and I think I went until four. So she she made it she made it pretty far and she was she was epic. I mean, she had uh, the kazoo out. She had the kazoo out. She had, you know, all of the little toys. I think I've got them in a bag down here. All Sebastian's little like musical toys. She was like banging the triangle, playing the kazoo, just going nuts. Uh, she was she was a riot. So uh, people people enjoyed it. Right? I'm going to be out of a job. I'm going to have to let the queen rip all the cards. <laughs> well, let's talk about ripping all these cards. A good segue here. So Scott, you mentioned you've, you've opened about 50 cases. I opened one myself plus a couple boxes. I got a couple boxes direct from tops and then uh, shout out to Ryan with ARC sports cards here in, in Concord, New Hampshire, my local card shop. And, um, yeah, let's just let's talk because our first episode and hopefully uh, quite a lot of you have checked it out already, both uh, downloading it on Apple Podcasts. We're all set there. I'm working on getting us everywhere else uh, as soon as possible, as soon as the stream is is available there. But quite a few of you commented here on YouTube. Um, I'm not a big one, Scott, to do all the like the like subscribe and all that other stuff. <laughs> I mean, we're just here to talk Formula One. So yeah. I, I don't know, like. There's a there's there's a lot to unpack here, uh, pun intended, with just overall thoughts. Because when we we were hinting about it when we recorded last, and now that we've actually had cards in hand, you've got a heck of a lot. I mean, you were going through that many packages and, and shipping and stuff. You've seen every base card a bajillion times at this point. Uh, let's just start general thoughts. Like, um, let's just talk imagery, the photos. What do you, how do you, how would you compare it to prior years? So I, I think it's pretty on par, right? I think there's some images that are great. There's some that are not amazing. And there's a lot that are, that are solid. I mean, I, I don't think there's anything about this year's images. If you're just talking the base card set, right? I don't think there's necessarily anything about this year's images that like sets it apart from other years in terms of being, you know, way better. Right. It's very, I think 21, 22, and 23 are all similar. They're all very different from 2020. 2020 is kind of just a, a different beast altogether. But 2023, very similar. Um, you know, we've already come up with a, a couple names for some of the cards, like the Lewis Hamilton, where he's got the umbrella, Hambrella. So that's a name. The Lewis Hamilton, where he's sitting down, he's got the red mercedes burgundy cap on that's king lewis so i mean there's already there's already a couple kind of like iconic you would say images i think some of the the images of the drivers with their helmets on and especially yeah. like if you go back to 2020 the george russell like spaceman right is mm -hmm. a very popular card but in that image and you can go back and look at it he's just got his helmet on right in the images of lando norris oscar piastri this is like the oscar number 41 by the way, mm -hmm. um, and Sergio Perez, those three, they've got their helmet and they've got their neck brace, which I mm -hmm. think like just, oh, it makes it look so aggressive. Like it looks like they're about to get in like a mech, you know, and like go to battle. Like seriously, like those, those images are very aggressive. And I, th I think they're already fan favorites. Like some of the people are even saying that they, they might even want to collect those cards more than the portraits. 
Um, so those three images specifically are amazing. So congratulations to, you know, Oscar Lando and, and Perez fans. You've got some nice cards to collect there, but overall, I think it's good. I think I, I, you know, I think positive in terms of the imagery, you know, it's, it's not something where I'm coming away from being like, Oh boy, man, there's, there's not very many good pictures here. I think overall there's, there's a solid selection, um, of, of images this year. And, and especially once you get into, and I'm sure we'll touch on it soon, but once you get into like, you know, variations and the different inserts and all that, like it, it really amps it up. So there's, there's a lot of cool stuff in the set for sure. I definitely felt like the portraits popped quite a bit, at least for some of the drivers, like, um, you know, like one of them that came to mind was like the Danny Rick. I like a lot of the ones with the helmets, you know, Leclerc's yeah. uh, Max pops. I like Lewis kind of, you know, he's, you know, he's suiting up. So I think overall, I think model. the the portraits or the portraits as as they say across <laughs> the pond, I thought were very good. Um, I guess I, I get what you're saying too. I think for me a little bit, I struggle always with the Grand Prix winners and the driver of the day cards that are in the set because especially as we'll talk about probably in future editions of this show is there's a lot of Max. There's a lot of Lewis and this year. There's a lot of Claire. Um, I find that a lot of the photos are kind of a little uh, dark. Like, I don't know if they were well lit enough. I, I don't know. They, those ones don't really scream to me too, too much. Yeah. But I think overall, I, I think, like you said, some of those secondary portraits for uh, some of the drivers. I am surprised though, Scott, that's like maybe like 10 of the drivers have about four cards. Um, a lot of them only have three and that makes it, we'll mm -hmm. talk in a little bit here. Um, you know, with, with a driver like Lando, he's only got three cards, a uh, portrait secondary and a, and a, well, technically two car cards. Um, I, I, I'm not a big fan of like the cars being used in like their, you know, like the, the subset for, for each driver with the, I just did the air quotes if you're not watching on, on YouTube here, but um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's tough. Actually we'll, we'll say into this. Some of these drivers are, are pretty tough. I mean, the the legends um, in breaks. A lot of these guys, as you know, Scott, are are very pricey. And if they've got mm -hmm. one card in the base set, you're you've got a, like a one in two hundred shot in any given pack of potentially even hitting a base card of them. Oscar Piastri, we we had a huge well, not a huge segment, but a, a segment last episode out talking about that. I mean between those you know those couple cards the four cards and and fifth with the the f1 freshest you know all rookie cards here he's only got he's two and a half percent of the of the checklist and he's the most expensive spot across all all breaks if you if you're breaking up by box or, or case or whatever it is he's a he's a tough bull i know i've personally have had a little bit of luck getting some some good cards but not <laughs> like some of the monsters if you were pulling i i it's so it, it it can be tough yeah yeah i think like oscar and lando you know across like the base set and then all the inserts and everything they they both have 11 which isn't isn't a ton right i mean the whole set right if you're looking at base set of 200 and every single insert you're almost at 400 cards you're almost at 400 i think it's like 396 so yeah i mean 11 it's not a ton and that and then it comes down to like a lot of it is like, you know, especially when you're joining a break, you know, some of it is like, you know, you're looking for the color. Right. So like and I I shipped out a lot of packages and I will say the majority of them, most of the packages I shipped out, everyone had a parallel, which I was really happy to see. There were there were only a handful of packages that I shipped out where all they had was base. And of course. I threw some extra stuff in because I hate to see that happen, but it can happen. And like one of the spots in particular where it happened multiple times is a one that's a, a little pricier because of the driver and the name that comes along with it, but it is Ayrton Senna. Ayrton Senna, I mean, he's only got three cards, right? Because he doesn't have an autograph, mm -hmm. of course. So he's just got, he's got his base legend. He's got a camber card and he's got his image variation, right? I mean, it's, you know, he is an extremely tough pull to get. And then I think, and I think he's also got, maybe he's got hidden gems. Um, Aaron, so you might actually have four cards. I think Senna, Senna has four cards, 
But even so, I mean, it was very rare to see Ayrton Senna. I think Schumacher has a fifth card. So I actually saw Schumacher a decent amount of the time. And so he was one of the legends that it's like, okay, yeah, you know, we're getting a decent him. And yeah, Senna does have a hidden gem. So he's in there for four, but I didn't, I didn't pull one. I didn't pull, I mean, hidden gems are extremely rare. We'll get into, into the odds a little bit later, but yeah, there's some drivers where it's definitely tough. You know, Max, you're getting a ton of cards. I mean, Max, I think Max might be one of the most underpriced or best value spots right now because not only is he a marquee driver you know so even if you're getting just a random gold insert you know it's still going to do pretty well if you're going to sell that card but i mean you just have such a better chance of hitting parallels with max because he has so many cards i mean max verstappen in this set literally has 39 cards that's almost four times as many as oscar and he costs you know, a couple hundred bucks less. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, I think there's definitely going to be, uh, I'm sure over the next month or so, there'll be some price adjustments for folks on certain slots. Um, and we haven't even had on track action, right? On track action is going to dictate that. I mean, I'll tell you right now, Oscar is a tough pull. If he puts it on the podium in Bahrain, his price will probably go up, not down. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, on track action is going to dictate some of that, but but yeah, I mean, uh, and you've got it up on the screen now. So again, this was just from the first day. So from the first day alone, early access, we ripped 18 cases in one day, one sitting, 18 cases, 4,320 packs. So 4,320 packs. I mean, you're talking 17,280 cards went through my hands. <laughs> Just in one few. day, in one day. And I mean, you know, there are so many different parallels. And that's one of the reasons I love this set is there's so many different unique cards in the set, right? It's not just like you're going for the base and like whatever color you get on that and maybe an auto, you know, like we've got turn up the lights. We hit five of those five. So, you know, that's like one, a little more than or a little less than one every three cases, almost one every four. So in between there you know, one every three and a half cases. We only had three hidden gems. Hidden gems are extremely rare. I mean, even through the next 25 or so cases I've ripped, hidden gems are elusive. We only had three of those. So that was one every six cases. Now, again, everyone take this with a grain of salt as a statistician. I must tell you that this is not significant data. This is negligible. It is anecdotal. Unless N equals 5%, it is not statistically significant. And for N equal 5%, you would literally have to rip like 280 cases. So none of these really matter. You could have some people that open three cases and get three hidden gems. So, you know, but this is just kind of what we saw. We saw seven F1 constructors crests. So a little bit more there. Five F1 armor. F1 armor, my my personal favorite card in the in the entire set. F1 armor. Wow. I am going to be collecting F1 armor. I'm going for a full set of the out of 50. I don't quite have <laughs> the cash to do an out of five set. Um, but uh we saw 10 image variations, seven celebration variations, and then five Futuro or Futuro autos. Seven Art Grand Prix and one Super Fractor over the course. Now we've hit another three Super Fractors, so we're up to we're up to four total now. But this is the this is what we saw on early access just in one day. A lot of amazing cards. Our first Super Fractor we hit, which was the first Super Fractor actually, first Super Fractor pulled on Fanatics Live uh, across everyone that was breaking there. But we hit the Nigel Mansell Legends card, the card from the actual base set Super Fractor. For Alexi Sets Fire, shout out to, to Adam. Congratulations on, on that for Super Factor and Fanatics Live. So, yeah, no, I mean, it was a ton of fun. It was a lot of cards. Um, and, you know, it was interesting because early on, you know, we went through like our first case was, was Percy's for folks. And I was kind of going through them a little slower, you know, like really like kind of looking through every card. Um, and then, you know, spending some time on the parallels, on the hits. And then later through the day, I mean, God, it was just how fast can I open this pack? 
and get through the first couple cards to get to the hit, right? Because the hit's always the third card or sometimes the fourth, depending on, on what you have in your pack. But so you're just like, foop, you like open the pack, fan it out really quick with your thumb, and like you can see if you've gotten something, and then you're just, you're just going when you're going through that many. And it was funny because I had, you know, I had Instagram rolling at the same time from like an off angle, you know, and I'm just going through and I had like some random guy come in. He's like, Oh, this is terrible. You know, I can't even see the guards. I'm like, listen, like, first of all, go on fanatics live. If you want to be able to see better angle, but also like we're on case 15 of the day. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. so yeah, we're kind of, we're kind of going through base pretty, pretty quickly here. Uh, but yeah, no, it was a lot of fun and, and shout out, honestly, thank you so much to the F1 castle community because we had, I mean, we had, between Instagram and Fanatics, we actually had over 200 people at one point, and we averaged like 100 plus throughout the entire 19 hours that we were live. So it was, it was awesome. Castle community, you guys are absolutely goaded. I mean, it was, it was so much fun. So appreciate everyone hanging out. We're going to be ripping a bunch more on Fanatics Live. We've done some rips on Instagram since. I've actually got a couple cases, uh, uh, three cases coming up tomorrow. They're already filled, but uh, we're running three cases tomorrow on Instagram. And then I'm going to try to get back on Fanatics uh, maybe sometime this weekend, maybe. Maybe even uh, Sunday or, or Monday or something. But uh, we're going to get back on there soon. And then, uh, guys, I mean, before we know it, it's going to be race. We've had testing now, Brian. Like, I don't, I don't mean to kind of derail, but, like, it's, it, it's coming at us fast and furious. There's so much to talk about about Formula One, and that's where yeah. we'll we'll break these into segments and and talking about you know all these different things. Uh, I'll we'll end the show with best pulls after, but I did want to kind of talk about quality control yep. QC of the card. So obviously you've seen a lot more of these than I have. I have already prepared one uh, one small shipment off to PSA. I've got a bunch either for myself or people sending me cards to Q3 cards. Um, if you can see behind me, uh, my um, my desk has been really busy lately. So we th we speculated the first episode they were going to be, you know, potentially a little bit thinner. I'll throw it over to you first, but I, I just like I've kind of been coined the phrase. Anybody that's been asking me about these, if anybody collects uh, Panini, like Prism, stuff like that. The this set is the first chrome set where it's very panini prism esque, and that's not meant to be a dig at all, it's just it's a lot thinner than we're used to, and you know that will lead to different things that you're going to want to look at when you're you know if you decide to or choose to grade your cards. Um, either way is perfectly fine, there's so many different ways to collect. Um, Stuff. what are you what are you seeing you've seen a, a heck of a lot more cards than, than i have scott yeah. yeah so i mean general overall quality i think is is decent right like there's listen every year even going back to 2020 2020 actually might have the most glaring issues right but every year 2021 i mean i remember the sapphire 2021 like on the Print top lines. the ridge you know looked like it was cut with a kid's scissors so i mean there's been quality issues every year there's always quality issues in every single product every time it's just inevitable right you're never going to get perfect cards which is why psa 10s sell for a premium so i think overall the the paper portion of the card stock is thicker, right? If you look at older Chrome cards, the paper portion is thicker. The Chrome portion is significantly thinner, significantly thinner. So they are overall thinner. The base cards and the parallels are actually really similar in terms of thickness of the card because in past years, you'd had the, the larger Chrome section and then a very thin paper section, unless it was a parallel, they had a thicker paper section because then they had to stamp in that serial number on the back of the card. This year, it's all changed because this year, serial number is stamped on the front of the card into their thin chrome layer, and it actually mm -hmm. looks like it's like layered. I don't think it's stamped in. I think that parallel number is like layered on top. So I think you've got thicker paper and a thinner chrome which still gives you like a solid feel in hand right like you've felt the cards 
I, I, I still feel like they, they feel solid, right? Like they don't, I don't mm-hmm. feel like, you know, Pokemon stuff, you know, like it's still a thicker card. Um, but overall, like you can probably put everything in a 35 point, every, every card you could probably put in a 35 point. I'm still putting a lot of the, the parallels in a 55 point and then mm-hmm. putting a sticker on top of it, you know, or a team bag to make sure they don't fall out just to be safe. You know, I feel like in shipping all the cards over, you know, the last thing I want to do is mess anyone's card up. So, but you can likely put everything in a 35 point for this year, which is nice. There's uniformity there, but overall centering this year, I actually think is probably the best centering we've ever seen in a formula one product. Like just talking centering alone. I like, I mean, God, some of the images we've seen from prior years where it's just like, way off center yeah, yeah. or just or just significantly off center so i've i've seen those have been few and far between there have been a couple handful of course but overall centering has been way better um there have been some print lines but not as bad as as prior years um you know every now and then a little a little bit of a dimple or a soft corner overall i think i think if you're talking just qc right not like the the quality of the actual card itself, but like the quality control in terms of print lines and corners and, and scratches and all that. I, I think it's actually above average compared to, to some of the other cards. Um, I think the grades, you know, I think we'll see pretty decent grades. Now you're going to be the one that's going to be able to talk to that more than me. You know, I'm, I open the cards and, and I can talk to the sport and everything, but like when it comes to QC, you got to talk to Q3, right? Like, you know, if you, <laughs> if you want QC, you talk to Q3. So, you know, once you get more of these in hand, Brian, I think you'll probably be able to give a, a better, you know, assertion of, of what you think the quality is like, but overall on the whole, I, I think it's, I think it's solid. Sure. Could some things be better? Yeah. But I think on the whole, I'm, I'm pretty satisfied. Yeah. I, I think we'll actually see a pretty fair uh, distribution of, of nines and tens. Um, I've seen some of those extreme off center things like 70, 30 type stuff. Um, you know, one thing to note too, and there's, um, you know, at at some point I'll do some little tips and tricks of, of like grading and, and prep and stuff, not to give away all my secrets. Yeah. Well, you could do that too, (laughs) but, um, you know, some of the edges have little fuzzies that there's different ways to clean those up really easily. Um, we'll, we'll talk about that. I have seen, and I would love to have a conversation with like Kurt of Kurt's card care and just figure out like why certain cards have this, but I had a couple cards and actually I, I pulled a George Russell, uh, gold wave autograph and a, and a, and a loose box I got from, nice. uh, ARC sports cards. And on the top right hand corner, there's like, like those little, I call them like little, uh, you know, like fingernail indents. Like it was an upper right hand corner. I don't know if it's like the way that they're compressing the cards together or, uh, you know, if it just gets caught in a certain thing. And like when they put that other chrome layer on, it just kind of like bunches up. The person who put the sticker auto on was just like, yeah, it's possible. But I also have seen (laughs) some on the back too. So I Mm. like, as you mentioned, each of the set has different things. And I think it's why I love prepping Formula One cards because knowing the sets like as well as both you and I do um, for different reasons, you opening all the cards, me looking under microscope on, on a lot of these things. So as we see a lot more of these, we'll, we'll start to share. Um, but I think overall, I, I think it's, it's pretty good. Um, nice. I think for, you know, I, I, yeah, I, I would say overall and we'll, we'll start to see some more. So I like, we're almost approaching 30 minutes here. We said we probably wouldn't go over that too often, but I think we're, I think everybody can see we're we're pretty excited uh, about the set, the season starting, testing, as you said. Oh my gosh, uh, Scott! Like t- off the top of your head, maybe like five of your of your favorite pulls, not just from early access, but since last week, like cards that you were just like the the equivalent of like Julian, Julian, Julian. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, I'd say like my. F- Five favorite pulls had, I mean, Nigel Mansell super factor has to be like my first super factor from the set. And it's a nice one. It's a big one. That was awesome. Um, I pulled the Teo port share super factor auto for uh junior Gamara who we were calling junior goat Mara. Cause he kept hitting, <laughs> kept hitting over and over. He, so he hit the Teo super factor auto. 
Um, one of my biggest, if not the biggest until maybe a couple nights ago was a uh, red Futero Oliver Bearman auto pulled four Q3 cards, man. You are on you, a streak. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It was just funny because you had gotten, you picked up like McLaren in one break. You picked up like, you know, F2 in another one, this and that one. And every single break you were in was getting something. You know what? It wasn't all Oliver Behrman red Futuro autos, but but so that one. Um, and then uh, quick story for for well, actually no, I, I guess I, Yuki Sonoda 1977 autos that insert Super mm -hmm. Fractor we just pulled. Um, wow. And then the last one, and I'll try to make it quick because I know we're we're over 30 minutes here. But so after the initial day. My wife and I, Queen of the Castle, we opened half of a case ourselves. We we're like, yeah, okay, now let's sit down and like breathe and like open some cards for us for fun. Six boxes. Literally, the best card we got was a Teo Porcher base auto. Like, not a good six boxes. So I was like, all right, you know what? Like, that was fun opening. Let's, you know, I'll I'll sell the other six. So F1 collector Jim picked up like three or four he hits a gold wave lando norris auto a hidden gems pierre gasly so like he's doing well then harding collector was on uh with Fan was on fanatics with me one night i had two boxes left and he's like yeah man i really want to get like an austin art du grand prix he's like screw it you know i'll take a box he hits an austin art du grand prix so i'm like oh my god so I'm sitting there with one box left. I was like, all right, does anyone want the last box? Like, does anyone want it? And no, no one wanted it. Everyone was like, no. I mean, it, granted, it was like four in the morning. Everyone's like, no, 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 no. So, so I, I went off. And then my friend J.K. Crowley hits me up on Instagram. And he was like, hey, you know, I'm looking to do a Percy box. And I was like, well, actually, I've got one box left from a case. We've only pulled five autos from it. So there might be an auto. I can't guarantee it, but there might be an auto in it. Like, you might want to grab that one. And it makes sense. You know, I've got one more loose box. Like, why not take that one instead of me opening a case? He was like, sure, let's do it. So open that box for him. Was it last night? Two nights last night? A couple yeah, nights dude, ago. I two think. nights ago. I think two nights ago. Um, last box of the night. Because we had, or no, it was in between. We had done a five case pick your team break. And then I was going to open that box before Jeff was doing five cases personal. Um, and so in between that, we open it. We've gone through 19 packs at this point. He's hit a bunch of decent parallels, but like nothing huge, right? Last pack. And in the last card, literally last pack, last card. My favorite card I have hit so far. And it was in the case that my wife and I opened. Not in the box we opened. Last box, last pack, last card. Red Oscar Piastri F1 armor. $5,000 card, like absolutely insane. You know, I think he bought the box for 250, 275 or something. Turns it into five grand. I mean, what an amazing card. I personally, I think maybe this is what we end on, Brian. Like my favorite insert, and I'm curious to hear what yours is. My favorite insert by a wide margin is F1 armor. Because when I grew up watching Formula One, the things that attracted me the most when like looking through the books that my dad would give me the magazines were the helmets and the flags of everyone mm -hmm. from all over the country. So I am just so into an insert that is based on the helmets. I love that the driver's also there on it because you kind of you, you're able to know right away. Okay, yeah, it's Oscar Piastri. It's not like, oh, whose helmet is that? You know, so you've got Oscar there with the helmet i like a lot of the poses that are on those cards but yeah so f1 armor my favorite insert what is yours yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna cheat and say the same thing too because obviously i haven't pulled one myself but every time i see uh either yourself or, or golden pulls or anybody else uh rated reps shout out to, to ferg anybody that's got their wall up i'm looking for autos and i'm looking for for f1 armor because they just pop so Yep. Yeah, I'm I'm hoping to eventually I, and I think it's also cool too cuz I know you collect them, I do as well. I know a lot of Formula 1 card collectors do as well is the the one and a half scale mini helmets. 
the one twos. I know you've got a couple behind you here. I have a couple of mine stored away. Um, I need to get some displayed. Um, I may or may not have gotten a couple of ones in recently um, uh, with a couple initials of, of OP and LN. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'll tell you right now, Brian, my plan, because I, I said it earlier in the show, I'm trying to put together a full set of the out of 50, which is like the base that most common version of the f1 armor i'm putting together the full set of all 20 and then i want to buy and i have some of them already but i want to buy the one two scale mini helmets of those and i want to make a display that has the card with the helmet for all 20 drivers i i think for me that's going to be like the ultimate card helmet f1 you know, display collection for, for me from the 2023 set. There's a lot of really cool cards. Some people like it in gems. Some people like turn up the lights, all the different stuff. There's a lot Futuro is huge. I mean, there's a lot of different stuff in this set for a little something for everyone um, is, is the way I like to put it. But uh, for me, it's, it's F1 armor. All right. Well, I knew there was going to be episodes that we we're going to talk a little bit longer here. So that that's all right. I mean, I don't think anyone's going to complain about hearing us. Uh, I mean, we're just a little enthusiastic about the support <laughs> of Formula One and, and the F1 card collecting hobby and, and community out there. So, Scott, I know you mentioned you got a couple breaks coming up. I know uh, I have to get used to you doing Fanatics Live because I yep. just loved it when you could pre-fill it and buy it ahead of time. So it'll, it'll take a little getting used to to have to, like, sure. you know, buy live well, in there. But... I you know, and I think part of it though, like, you know, I'm still going to be doing Instagram guys. So still look out for my stuff on Instagram. I'm going to post it. You're going to be able to comment, grab your stuff. But with fanatics live, like a lot of it, we did actually end up pre-filling. Like I would post it in my store and then go to Instagram and be like, Hey guys, I posted this. Here you go. But I actually do want to get into like doing it live because like, you know, imagine I could go live at like 10 AM on a given day. You know, you guys can be sitting there at work and all of a sudden you tune in and you're like, Oh, you know, Oscar Piastri spot is open on this case. And I want to get into the habit of like, hey, if I'm on Fanatics Live and I'm selling stuff for spots, I want to rip it then. You know, mm -hmm. that's what I really want to use Fanatics Live for is live ripping, not like pre-filling for later. I want to rip. If I'm going live and I'm selling spots, I'm ripping right after I sell those spots. So that's how I'm going to try to use Fanatics Live going forward. I'm also going to do a ton, ton Guys, if this is your thing, singles, if you like to buy singles, I'm going to do a metric load of single streams on Fanatics Live. So look out for that. I'll be doing a ton of it. Um, and yeah, I mean, we, we're not going anywhere from Instagram. But so Fanatics Live, Instagram, F1 Castle, place to be. So Scott, my last question for you here is, have you given any other thought to an outro here? I know we, we threw it to Drew. Drew and Gina, one of the OG uh, Castle uh, Castleites. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm still struggling. I cut you off the last episode. It actually took me a while to edit the saying. end of the last episode because. Of it. Jeez. Yeah, honestly, like it has been such a whirlwind this past week. I haven't even really had time to think about it. And also for the community out here, guys, we're going to try to get to two episodes a week. Um, to to give you guys a little more uh, carbon car cardboard in your ears, but uh. Right now, it's it's just been tough, obviously, with with release week. So everything will calm down a little bit more going forward, and we should be able to get to that schedule of of two a week. Um, and then hopefully we'll have uh, an outro <laughs> nailed down by then. Oh, uh, we'll just go with that for uh, at this point. So yeah, we'll see, we'll see everybody again soon here. Have a good one.